is now backing the CIA's assessment that Russian hackers sought to tilt the election in favor of President-elect Donald Trump. Investigators have determined that they breached American political institutions to lead to the theft of countless sensitive communications. So joining us on The Morning Show to talk about this development is the director of JU's Public Policy Institute, Rick Mullaney. Rick, let's start off with the first question I asked you because it's a little confusing for people out there who are like, oh my goodness, so... The whole reason why Trump was chosen was because of these hackings, but you're saying that's not what that means. That's not accurate. We should just define what we mean by political institutions. The investigation of some, both the CIA and the FBI, is not that the hacking affected voting machines. It didn't affect the vote counts. Not about Michigan, not about Wisconsin. Mm -hmm. What they did, however, is hack the DNC, the Democratic National Committee, as well as John Podesta. And when they did, those emails were released to the media, and the argument is that the release had a damaging effect on the outcome. And so we should clarify what it means and what it doesn't mean. That's not to minimize how significant hacking is, right. but it did not change the outcome in that way. And in fact, Donald Trump has reacted very strongly because some are trying to suggest this taints the outcome of the election, and quite frankly, it's a little unfair to suggest that. And but as far as, like you said, we don't want to take it lightly that this hacking happened, what does it mean for us that they're able to hack into our political system? Well, you're going to see this is the way of the future. These cyber attacks are real. But we should really clarify three separate issues here. Okay. One is whether or not it changed the voting total, which it didn't. Mm -hmm. The other is the, is the actual hacking, the consensus of the intelligence agencies is that there was Russian hacking. And the third is what was the intent? Did they favor Donald Trump or not? And that is being much debated. You, I think what you're going to see is a bipartisan committee, Republicans and Democrats, look at this. The president yesterday talked about the need to take a measured response, and we clearly should. Mm -hmm. You should not be a foreign power, be allowed to hack, have a cyber attack into this country with impunity. And so I think you're going to see some appropriate steps, some steps taken. We'll see what those are. And you heard what Obama said yesterday, President Obama. Right, about this whole hacking. Do you think his word, I mean, he seemed pretty, pretty mad, pretty ticked off. Uh, I, I, think, I think the president is actually, there are those on the, on the president like Trump side who are concerned about the taint of the election. There are those on the Clinton side who are trying to use this as sort of the scapegoat. Right. The president, I, I do believe, start, start staked out a bit of a middle ground that says, look, this is a serious matter. Mm -hmm. We're going to take appropriate response. It's not acceptable to be hacking or trying to influence the outcome of an American election or to cause disruption. And so I think you're going to see, in the end, bipartisan support for that response. Absolutely. Now let's switch gears a little bit. So uh, President-elect Trump has the transition team. It keeps forming. Yes. And we have a few names we're going to throw up on the screen of people that he's added to that team now. And basically what it means for the future of our country. Julian, can we get that up there? There we go. So that's a big group of people there that he's got. Who sticks out in your mind as far as his picks that is, hey, that was a great pick? Let me say this. If you, if you look at the picks in general, it's mm -hmm. not as though there's a consistency in ideology necessarily, although they're conservative. A lot of it relates to John, Donald Trump's personal confidence in them. But if there's any two words that I would use to describe his cabinet, and his, in particular, it is new direction. Yeah. And by that, I mean, if you look to the Labor Department, I think you can see a new direction on overtime. If you look to HHS, Health and Rehabilitative Services, a different approach on Obamacare. If you look to Commerce under Wilbur Ross, a new approach when it comes to trade. And, of course, the big one, Secretary of State. Right. Rex Tillerson could be a very different approach when it comes to Russia. And for the Education Department, very different approach on education. So look for the Trump cabinet to have a shift in policy and a very new direction. Well, we'll have to see how that all pans out, but it is exciting. I think change can be good. Well, a lot of how you, a lot of how you view this change depends on where you sit. Yeah. Uh, for many conservatives, they feel that the EPA, for example, look, look to that agency to have, has been overly activist. Mm -hmm. And that some of these changes will be less activist. That's true in the EPA. That'll be true in the education department. I think you'll see that happen in labor. And so, for many, this is, a, this is something that they're looking for. For others, they'll be disappointed because it will be less activist. But regardless of where you sit, get ready come January for a new direction when it comes to the approach of, these, of, of the Trump cabinet. Well, thank you so much for coming on the show. Change is coming. If you need to read more about Mr. Trump's transition team and see those specific names, of course, you can go to newsforjax.com and click the Politics tab.